Yes, thank you. Okay, well, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Shares, for um, putting this on. And um, obviously, thank all, all you out there for um, giving up half an hour of your valuable evenings to uh, to listen to our story. Um, first of all, we obviously have to go through the obligatory disclaimer. Um, but just a little bit about the company itself. Um, Scott Gold is, we do what we say on the tin. Um, we're mining gold in Scotland. We're an AIM-listed um, company, so we, 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 we go through all, that, all those hoops and regulations. Um, our principal asset is the Cornish gold and silver mine. Um, but you know, over and above the mine itself, we're um, um, we're putting in our exploration, a big exploration strategy, and that is going to bring us a pipeline of uh, of projects we hope in the future. And driving all this, we've got a very broad, experienced team, both on the production side and at a board level, in terms of um, making things happen. And so essentially where the company is now, you know, a lot of um, um, juniors start out as exploration companies and grow. We're, we're at that point where we're, we're transitioning from an explorer through to a, a producer and explorer. And the big thing about that is it means that our, our, our funding is now totally will be self-driven from the cash flow we develop from our, from our mine. Just a little bit of a corporate overview. I think we're, we're a very simple structure. You've got the um, um, Scott Gold Resources at the, at the, at the top here. Um, it, it's a, a, we are originally a um, Australian company, and that's just from the legacy issues. Um, we haven't changed the domicile, but essentially all the management and the resources are UK based, so we operate as a, as a, as a UK company. Um, the shareholding is quite tightly held. Um, Nat LaRue is our chairman here, and it's 41%. That's not through um, design. It's simply it's a case of he was um, um, uh, got involved with the company in 2013 and believed in the in the asset, wanted to recapitalize it. But you know we have found that in the market that we're in, it's, it's funding for our type of niche, which is very small. And I'll come on to the sort of scale of the operations in a minute, is quite difficult to find. And so he basically put his money to where his mouth is, and that's how he ended up with his percentage. But you know, going forward, um, um, the idea is that he will probably dilute himself down. Um, he's not into after the control, and um, you know, our our liquidity is, is is currently increasing as we have issued more shares in the past. Um, I think everyone looks at where our share price is going. Our share price is um, you know, largely reflecting the fact that we've got this project, which is now coming into production. And so, obviously, as it as it gets closer and closer to production. The um, uh, discount, if you like, or the risk attached to it is, is, is perceived to be reducing. That's relate, relate, translates into a higher share price. You know, and obviously, you know, we've got um, value, further value in our exploration, which I think will be valued more once a, once a gold, Cornish gold project is in, is in operation. You know, and we've got um, value from Scottish gold, and that we'll be producing Scotland's only, only Scottish gold. Um, it has a proven provenance, and you know we've proven from our earlier trials that that can demand a significant premium. So this, so, so this is just our rogue gallery of the, of the board and 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 people involved. And as, and um, obviously, if you want to know anyone's background, it's all available on our website. But it represents a broad range of experience, both within the industry, uh, mining industry, and finance industry. And you know some of the key players involved have got you know, significant track records, both in terms of um, managing companies and uh, and in fact you know successful deals themselves. So we do have a successful track record of, of the people involved. Moving on then to the operational focus. This is just basically there's two main areas. As I said earlier, we're an explorer turning into now now turned into a producer. So the main focus is the is at the moment is the producer, which is the Cornish gold and silver mine. And there's a picture there of it being, you know, as we were busy assembling it about a month or so ago. We're now at the process where the machinery is all in the in the, in the building. The building is built, um, and we're starting the um, the commissioning process, both hot and cold commissioning. On the right hand side, you've got a picture of Scotland, and as you can see, those blue um, areas and um, those represent our exploration licenses. So we are um, have exploration says some 13 of them all across Scotland from east to west. And they uh, coincide predominantly with the what was known as the Dalrasian geological belt, and that's a band of geology which stretches from uh, uh, Scandinavia across Scotland through Northern Ireland into um, into North America and uh, and Newfoundland. So it's sort of a global scale feature, and we've got the lion's share of that best ground here in here in Scotland. So moving on to the Cornish gold and silver mine. 
The key thing here is um, this is a little bit of a view of the valley and um, the Cornish Gold and Silver Mine was first discovered in the 80s um, and now after the, uh, this long period of, uh, of uh, gestation um, we're finally going to be pouring our first commercial gold at the end of next month so we're all very excited about that and um, this gives you just a little bit of a view of where we're at. The actual mine itself is up here uh, and just under that, uh, that um, cliff face you can see there and essentially we're going into that hill and we're mining a vertical seam in that hill you can see. The Connish Gold and Silver Mine Overview. I think the, the important thing to take away from this is that by gold mining standards, and for those of you that are not familiar with the gold mining industry, but you know, commercial mines generally um, start at around about a million ounces and, and, and go upwards from there. And uh, we're talking about um, a quarter, 266,000 ounces, so we're very small. Um, and one would think, well, you know, how do you manage that? You know, this doesn't don't turn the uh, and the economies of scale work against you. The difference is that we have extremely high grade relative to the rest of the industry. We're talking about an average yield of 11.7 grams a ton, um, and that high grade both generates low costs in terms of cost per ounce, and, um, and conversely, uh, along with that, high profit. So small, 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 but beautiful. Moving on to the next one is the we recently announced the, um, our expansion. Now this mine, as I alluded to earlier, you know, it's, it was a great little project. It was deemed too small by all the big players. We were, you know, who wants to lend you 20 million when they normally lend to it in the order of 200 million? It wasn't worth the big financial institutions sort of getting out of bed for. Um, and so we said, well, if, okay, if they're not going to fund us, we can do it ourselves. And to do it ourselves, we actually, what we did was we split the, en engineered the project into two phases. So phase one was to get up and running at half capacity, and phase two was then to expand up to its full capacity. And that was purely designed like that because of the financial constraints in terms of funding. We've now just about to commission phase one, but in the market that we're in, we said, well, hang about, if we can accelerate phase two, why don't we do so? So instead of waiting until we can self-generate funds to phase phase two, we've now said so now we've now raised sufficient funds from the market and we are already ordering the materials and equipment we need to accelerate phase two. So that means that instead of phase going up to full production uh, in 28 months time, we'll now be doing it in 17. So we've saved just about a year. And from an economics um, perspective, this is a, you know it's, it's obviously a, a no-brainer. It, it does it's very very good for the for the for the for the, for the basically for the cash flow. And you know why, given that we've got all the overheads, we know where the project is. Why not go for it? So that's phase two. If we then move on just a little bit about the overall mine plan. And this just gives you a little bit of a feel for you know what is this thing worth? You know, I said I said we're small. We're still sitting with an EBITDA of some 177 million pounds, you know, which relates, which translates to a net cash flow of 127 million, um, which then relates to a, a, an MPV of some 96, um, but based on an 8% 8 discount value. So there's a lot of value to be had there, and I think well, the important thing is that you know this thing will become very much a, a cash cow. We'll be chucking out cash with, with the, the capital has all been all been spent. And you know we've done a lot of work to um, to work out how we get there in terms of the exploration, in terms of the planning you have to go through, in terms of how to raise the funds, how to get an operating team together. So really, this is you know we see this as just the beginning. We need to leverage off all those all these ex the experience we've had and the school fees we've learned along the way to actually bring the next one in. So the start of the turn is great, and the rest just gets 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 better. And I think if we just one last figure I'd like to point out there, you know, we have an all-in sustaining cost of uh, under $600 an ounce, and that is, you know, very low um, by industry standards, definitely in the bottom quartile, depending on which uh, documentation you read, and you know, compare that with uh, the, the current gold price of uh, the 1800s, it's, um, it's, it's not to be sneezed at. Um, essentially, the underground stoping, this is, this is a, a, a nice symmetric view in 3D of what the mine looks like. Um, this is the, basically the vertical seam as it sits in, in that hill you saw in that earlier, earlier picture. Um, there's a tunnel which is in the red, which goes in the middle of that, that hill. From there, we're mining up and mining down. It's about, a, about 160 meters vertically up and about a further 80 meters down. And it's about 800 meters in, in, in strike length. So it's relatively compact. You know, within when we're looking at in terms of the scale of Scotland, then we'll 
we'll come on to that again in a minute when we talk about exploration. Um, but this is sort of conventional methodology of mining. There's nothing, um, there's nothing bleeding edge about it, and nothing high tech. It is, it is the way things are conventionally done. In terms of the actual processing that's getting the gold out of the ore, we are slightly different. And the reason that we're different predominantly is because we're in a um, we're in a national park. And as a, as a result of that, you know, we obviously you know, look at ways of how we can avoid using cyanide. Cyanide is very conventionally used you know, throughout the gold mining industry. Um, but obviously in, in such a sensitive area, it was a no-go. And so we've come up with a, a processing route which avoids that last step of doing the doing the um, Cyanidation. As a result, we actually produce two products. We produce a gravity gold product, which is basically the uh, once the ore has been um, ground and and um, and brought down to approximately a 100 micron, um, it gets spun in a centrifuge, and the heavy heavy particles, which are predominantly gold, spin out, and that concentrate can be smelted and into dory. And the beauty of that is because we have direct access to it, we can trace that chain of custody from us through a refiner to a jeweler and back to the Edinburgh assay office, that gives us the uh, the credentials to be able to call that gold Scottish with a proven provenance it would bear our logo as well as the assay office's hallmarks and that you know, commands a premium. Although we've, we haven't allowed for any premium in our, in our financials I mentioned earlier. So that's all the icing on the cake. The bulk of our product, it comes out as a sulfide flotation concentrate, so that's lower grade, approximately 150 gram a tonne. That gets shipped in bags and gets uh, will get sent to a, a um, smelter somewhere in Europe. Um, uh, as a result of that, we do sort of lose the provenance of it, and that's what we would just pay at the conventional spot as any other gold mining um, operation, operation would. Just a little bit about, about social governance. You know, we obviously, community support is a must. We are very blessed with a lot of support from our local community. You know, we are in a in relatively deprived area and as such, you know, we, we, we do qualify for, for grants um, for job creation, which is which is welcomed. We're also in the National Park, which, in, which means we have to have a, an extremely high level of compliance and which is rigorously, um, rigorously monitored. Although having said that, we just like to point out about 65% of our exploration is actually outside the National Park. So we're doing the hardest one first and uh, future mines, you know, we believe will be a lot easier. Moving on to our exploration. I think you can see from, uh, as I mentioned earlier, the exploration takes two forms. One is we've got the Cornish mine um, and it has a, an eight a brock as with the current reserves that I mentioned of some 266,000 ounces. That gives us uh, about, about a nine year mine life. And so the quest, first question is, well, can we expand that? Can we, other, uh, how, how can we extend that life of mine? And that's the Cornish near mine targets we're looking for. And the next thing is say, well, we've got this whole block of ground all the way across Scotland. How can we um, find more mines? And if one looks at you know what's in the area you've got the galantis mine which is a similar scale to us in northern ireland and you've got the dalradian uh, uh, mine in northern ireland also which is a multi-million ounce so we, we're looking for new mines but they don't necessarily all have to be the same size as cornish we'll be very happy to find more cornishes but you know we may get lucky and find uh, and find something the size of a, of a dalradian which could be you know a complete game changer so that's where we that's where we're at just coming on to a little bit of just illustrating the, the exploration itself. And this just gives you an overview again of the of the of the um, uh, licenses we've got, kind of say basically covering from east to west in Scotland. Um, we, we, we managed to acquire this number. We're probably the biggest landholder in terms of exploration licenses uh, because we started back in back in um, 2007. But you know, we we um, 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 Scotland is is a largely unexplored area, for which, which which may sound a bit odd. People can't believe it, but um, you know everyone's known about Scotland's gold in Scotland for 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 you know for centuries. People have been panning there, and um, you know guys stand in freezing cold water for for months on end to get enough ring enough gold for a wedding ring and that type of thing. Um, but the, the reality is that it's very expensive to um, to to explore in Scotland because of the the terrain. You've got these high high you know, high bends and uh, so forth and Munro's. The other side of it is it's all glacial, so the glaciers have, have shuffled stuff around. So you know you're looking for the for the for the pea under the shells, and people have been moving the shells around all over the place. So from that perspective, that's why there hasn't been any commercial gold mine to date, and that's why the, the focus on now is you know how can we unlock 
unlock the secrets and find out where we're amongst all the, uh, the smoke and the known um, current gold deposits, we can find a new um, economic target. This just gives us a bit of a view of you know, the Cornish mine. If you look at the, the, the graph, the um, diagram on the left, you can see that little black box outlined con the Cornish ore body. That's the scale of what we've got. And then these are this overlaid on that. The uh, the red blobs are the um, what we found from our, our soil anomalies uh, testing. And what you can see is that we found sort of similar red blobs along strike from Cornish to the uh, to the northeast there. You know, which on a scale of which you know could easily house another another Cornish. So that's what gives us the the exciting view that you know, we believe we will be able to, um, with further drilling and exploration, extend the life of Cornish. But over and above Cornish, you know, further to the north, to the, to the north of us, we've got an anomaly called um, Ben Uli. So if we look in the top right uh, diagram, you can see I had a big um, um, the big pink blob is generated by um, our drainage sampling. We've gone on to that same blob. If you look below that same area, we've been covered with um, with uh, uh, our soil anomalies, the soil, soil geochemistry. And there you can start to see within that pink blob, we're now focusing down on the bottom right-hand side. There's some very interesting areas and very strong anomalies coming. And so that's what basically giving us a focus, focusing in within that, that big red area. So that would most likely be a, a target for a, for, a, for a new mine, hopefully. So the key to the key to finding new mines is is is, is to do it cost effectively, and you know drilling is the the most expensive exploration tool you can use, and therefore from our perspective, it's the one you should use last. The first thing to do is to use the uh, the, the the soil geochemistry, or the the drainage sampling which I showed you, the pink red blob, the soil geochemistry, and um, then we're looking at um, 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 airborne geophysics to then identify the dips of the ore body. We're then using structural analysis to work out which are the most favorable routes. And then we, we data, we've got all that data together when we've got the most focused area we can, we'll then invest in the, in the, in the, in the, in the drilling. So that sort of basically brings me to the sort of conclusions. I've talked about you know, the fact we're in, which is about in production from, uh, from uh, Cornish. Um, I've talked about the fact that um, uh, you know, we've got significant upside potential from, for resource expansion. I think you know organic growth and and uh, and growth through acquisition is an important one to mention. You know we are we we found from 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 bitter experience that you know as a as an explorer you know having access to funding is is is, is not necessarily difficult in the in the sort of niche market that we're in. But if we are there and we've done it and we will have a strong cash balance and and uh, balance sheet from uh, from operations, we'll obviously be, be in a very commanding position and we bring a lot of expertise now in terms of you know how to get things done, how to get the planning commissions through, how to build uh, an operating team, uh, et, et cetera. Um, you know, we talked about um, our other shareholders being um, being 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 crucial, and and that's very much so. And the fact that we're doing the first one in the national park is for us the sort of badge of honour. It's what sets us apart. As you know, we can actually say that we've been there, we've done it, we've got our credentials. And I, I think, you know, without breaking, I'd like to say we have a believe, like to believe we have a very constructive relationship with uh, with all the authorities. We are we we know they are we are very frequently visited by themselves and their and their agents. And uh, and today, you know, we've been, we've been very pleased with the way the way things have gone. Um, in terms of, um, I think all that boils down to what is from Scott Gold's perspective. We'd see we are coming up the value curve. We've transformed ourselves from an explorer into a into producer. There's still the full value has not yet been realised for us as a as a producer at Connish. Then over and above that, you've got you've got the, um, the this prospect of of expansions at Connish. You've got the prospect of you know more Connishes or even bigger, like a Dalridian type deposit being discovered over in this in the um, significant land package we've got. And then over and above that, which is something which we haven't qualified, quantified at all, is the is, is the Scottish gold, and it's that we believe that you know blends into Brand Scotland. Um, it, we've had a lot of interest from uh, from um, um, jewellers and and other off takers who'd like to get their hands on our Scottish gold, and indeed, you know, we, when one talks of premiums, we're talking you know in the order of thirty percent plus. So we're not quite sure what the market will stand. We can produce twenty five percent of our Gold, as Scottish gold, as I mentioned earlier, and if all that was sold, that you know, a 30% plus premium 
it obviously makes a significant difference to our to our cash flow. So, you know, now is an opportunity within the company's life cycle for to get in at a in a relatively early stage. And um, with that, I'll um, open myself to any any questions anybody's got. Okay, quite a few questions have come in, so I'll try and get through as many as I can for you, Richard. Yeah. Um, Scotland, Scotland is unique as only producer of Scottish gold in inverted commas. How does Eris and Greatland Gold fit into this? So they are exploring gold in Scotland as well. Um, uh, well, basically, we're 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 the only producer. I don't see there may well be may well be future producers, but um, you know we know from uh, from experience the timeline from um, from exploration to production is is is, is significant. So you know, with, with the best one in the world, they're, they're, they're several years away. Um, we are, I think, we're probably doing the pioneering work for um, to establish the brand. If and when they are producing, you know, we'd obviously be happy to work with them. Um, and on how we, um, you know, divvy up the pie, whether we form some sort of a um, Scottish Gold board that can administer, can administer Scottish Gold, you know, that's that's all possibilities. So down down the line, yes, there's a possibility there'll be other suppliers, but you know, realistically, we know that's there's, there's several years away yet. Okay. Um, do you have a second target mine in mind uh, after Kunish is up and running? Will this run in parallel? And do you have any indications on the quantity of gold in the second mine? Um, no, we don't have any specifics yet. I mean, essentially, the rest of the exploration is early stage. So, you know, it's it's it's, it's one of those things we will need to advance those anomalies that I showed on the on the, on the maps um, to such a point where we can drill them off. And when we drill them off, we'll use that data to to generate a uh, a resource. And from that, you put a mine plan on it, and you and you, and you get a reserve. So, it's too early to say. Um, what they'll be, but, but from looking at the scale of the anomalies, you can see they look very similar in scale to to what Cornish is. So you know we're optimistic they'll come up as big as that. But obviously, if you find several anomalies in a in a small area, they could be developed into a much bigger mine. Absolutely, yeah, okay. Um, I think you mentioned uh, eight and a half years of left of life in the mine. Do you expect this to increase? Um, yes, we do. And um, based on the uh, extra anomalies we found very close to Cornish. So, you know, essentially, uh, we would have to um, apply for a new planning permit. The, the planning permission we have is very specific to the, the amount of tonnage that we will produce. And that uh, uh, matches, our, matches our reserves. However, I think the, the, the arguments are for, for the mine being approved, where the benefits we bring to the community, the long-term benefits to the environment and the good we're doing in the Glen and so forth. So on the basis that we're doing a good job and we're good corporate citizens and we're still benefiting everybody, one would, one would expect that a, a, a future expansion would be, would be favorably considered. Okay. Uh, so another one here, the, quite a few. What is the estimated operating margin? Will you start to hedge fund, hedge the gold price once you start to produce the gold? Uh, we've, we've got a margin of over 60%. So we're, we're very low cost um, operator. So we don't really see the need from a from that perspective to hedge. Um, traditionally, one, some, one considers a hedge if one's got a significant capital outflow coming up and one wants to protect one's sort of revenue stream while you're going through that, uh, that that expansion program or whatever. That's not quite the case with us in that we're, we're past the back of the, the bulk of our of our, our uh, capital commitment. So I don't think we need to hedge from that perspective. And from a, from our perspective, you know, we are a, being unhedged gives gives our shareholders a maximum upside potential to the to the price of gold. And you know, we're 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 bulls on the price of gold. I think has a lot of our shareholders are so you know we're, we hope to remain unhitched. Absolutely. Um, how much do you ex expect to spend on exploration each year? Um, good question. Um, uh, just, uh, up to now it's been as much as we can afford which hasn't been a lot because we because we've you know <laughs> we've essentially been focused on on building a Cornish and uh, and so the obviously the the amount you spend it depends a little bit on success so you know, we we will be rolling out. Um, you know, it's, it, it will be in the millions next year because we're we're um, uh, uh, looking at how we're going to roll out the uh, the the drill, the drainage sampling, soil sampling, um, um, underground true physics, the programs that we've identified. So we're rolling them out over the over the rest of the area. So it, we will it will ramp up significantly. I would can't put a specific number number on it, but it, it, it will, 
there's a, there's a limit to how much you can do cost effectively. And effectively, our, our, our goal is to, number one, extend the life of the Cornish, number two, find new mines, but we want to do it cost effectively. There's no point in just throwing money at it to try and speed it up and to get to a point where you can, you know, it's like you know, pushing something through water. You can push harder and harder. You don't necessarily go much faster. So we'll do it cost effectively, but to achieve what we need to achieve within our time frame. Okay, I've got time for one more question. Um, has demand for your jewellery shop type gold in inverted commas remained steady during the pandemic? For instance, will there uh, be sufficient demand for the 25% Scottish gold? Uh, yes, uh, the, the, we produce, for those who don't know, we produce some Scottish gold from a little pilot metallurgical plant that we installed um, back in 2016. That got sold to basically two jewellers, which is Hamilton Inches and Sheila Fleet. They have sold pretty much all of that. They are building an order for, um, for, for when we start producing again. I have regular calls with them to update them as to how when products coming. They are very anxious to know when, it, when it's coming. And um, you know the indications are that all our gold that can be uh, sold as Scottish gold, i.e. that gravity concentrate, will be sold to them in, in 2021.